Star Trek The Original Series episode, A Piece of the Action. This iconic episode is from Season 2. It is Episode 17 and premiered on January 11, 1968. It was directed by James Comack. The storyline was written by David Harmon. And his special guest stars were Vic Tabak as Jojo Krakow and Anthony Caruso as Bella Oxmix. The sets were decorated by John Dwyer and the costumes were designed by William Thies. The episode opens with the USS Enterprise heading to Sigma Losha II. Lieutenant Uhura would inform Captain Kirk that communications were established with a person named Bella Oxminx. She said he was referred to as a boss. The captain introduces himself as captain of the Starship Enterprise representing the United Federation of Planets. Captain Kirk informs him that they were affiliated with the USS Horizon, but only just received the signal from her after she was lost shortly after leaving Sigma Losha II over 100 years earlier. This of course is a lack of subspace radio communication at the time. He explains that the ship will not land, instead he will transport several people down, much to the confusion of Bella Oxmix. Oxminx has them beam down to an intersection location with a yellow plug and says he will have a welcoming committee there to meet them. Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, and Dr. McCoy beam down to investigate the possible contamination of the Iocean planet by the USS Horizon. Upon beaming down, the party is almost hit by a passing car, and Mr. Spock notices that nearly everyone is carrying firearms. Two men with machine guns would come up behind them and take them to Bella Oxmix. They would use terms like petrify, turn to stone, and don't give me them baby blues. While taking them to see Bella, a car would then come down the street and open fire on them, killing one of the men. Upon meeting Bella Oxmix, he would inform the captain that he was the boss of his territory that was the biggest in the world. Mr. Spock inquires about an individual named Krakow. Oxminx asks how he knows about him, and it was his men that informed Oxminx that they were hit. After hearing this, he says, okay, hit him back, hit him back hard. Mr. Spock and Dr. McCoy notice a book on a stand titled Chicago Mobs of the Twenties, published in 1992. He would open it and call Captain Kirk over to investigate. Bella Oxminx would inform them that that's the book, the book left by the horizon. Mr. Spock then says the source of the contamination, Captain. Oxminx said they left other books on how to make radio sets and other things. Then Bella would demand help from the captain. He would want enough heaters to wipe out his competition and take over. After the Federation could just deal with him after he was the boss of the entire planet. He told Captain Kirk that he would give him just eight hours to give him what he wanted or else they would tell the ship to pick up them, the landing party, in a box. Obviously, Captain Kirk would not comply. After Oxminx is given the communicators and phasers taken them from the landing party, he has them brought to a warehouse to be prisoners. After they are taken away, Bella Oxminx would contact the Enterprise and inform Mr. Scott that he had taken the captain and the party hostage, and he would demand 100 heaters as well as troops to show them how to use them. He would give Mr. Scott eight hours to comply. While being held hostage, Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, and Dr. McCoy discussed the contamination of the book left by the Horizon. Dr. McCoy says it's like kind of a Bible. And Mr. Spock says that it is necessary for the unification of the planet to ensure a healthy future and fix the contamination left behind by the USS Horizon. Captain Kirk would develop a plan. He approached the men keeping them captive. He noticed that they were playing cards. The captain would inform them of a game from Beta Antares IV. That was a man's game. He would get the cards and inform the armed men of a game called Fizbin. The cards on Beta Antares IV are different, but not by much. Kirk explains the rules of the game. Each player gets six cards, except the player on the dealer's right, which gets seven cards. The second card is turned up, except on Tuesday. 
He says to the man that has the two jacks already, and he says he's already on his way to half a fizzbin. His captor says that is good, right? And I only need one more jack. Captain Kirk informs him that another jack would be bad and result in a shrunk, which would disqualify him. The captain told him he needed a king and a deuce, except at night, when he would need a queen and a four. He gives another card to the man and smiles, and he says, look at that, you've got another jack. How lucky for you. And says, if you didn't get another jack, if you'd gotten a king, then you'd get another card, except when it's dark, then you'd have to give it back. The man says, give it back when it's dark on Tuesday. Captain Kirk says, yes, but what you're after is a royal fizzbin and asks Mr. Spock what the odds on a royal fizzbin are, and Mr. Spock says that he never calculated it. Now for the last card, says the captain, we'll call it a crom. He flicks the card onto the floor on the side of the man. The man says that he'll get it. And that is when Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, and Dr. McCoy make their move. They overtake the captors and regain their freedom. The captain said that Lieutenant Uhura was monitoring the radio frequencies and to tap into them and have themselves beamed back to the Enterprise. He said that this mess was the responsibility of the Federation and was headed to Bella's office to take him back to the ship as well. On his way to Bella's office, he would be taken hostage again, this time by one of Jojo Krakow's men. In the meantime, Mr. Spock and Dr. McCoy would contact the Enterprise using the AM signal at the radio station. Upon meeting Mr. Krakow, he identifies Kirk as the Fed. Astonished, Captain Kirk asks him how he even knows who he is. Krakow responds that he has Bella's communications tapped. He goes on to say that he can't even make a date with abroad unless he knows about it. Jojo Krakow is the boss of the entire South Side Territory. Captain Kirk says, let me guess, you want to make a deal. You want heaters and troops to show you how to use them, and then you can take over, and then we'll talk. Krakow says, wrong. I know Bella, and you didn't offer you anything. I'll give you a third, skimmed right off the top. The captain explains to him the imperative nature of uniting the planet and suggests a meeting between Oxminx and Krakow himself. Captain, C captain Kirk says he does not think Krakow is stupid, but his behavior is arrested. Krakow screams that he has never been arrested in his life. And it is worth noting that a copy of the book, Chicago Mobs of the Twenties, is in his office as well. Krakow then says to keep him here and have sterile the knives sharpen up his blades that he may have a job for him, unless Kirk gives him what he wants. The captain refuses. Krakow puts him on ice. While locked in a room, Captain Kirk notices a radio, takes off the back and removes what appears to be the transformer. Meanwhile, back on the Enterprise, Mr. Spock and Dr. McCoy attempt to get help from the computer and find no solution to their dilemma. Oxminx contacts the ship and says that Krakow put the bag on their captain and he can help them get him springed. He promises no hostilities towards the landing party at all and that he is only a businessman. Upon beaming down, Mr. Spock suggests to Mr. Scott that he puts the ship's phasers on a strong stun setting. Meanwhile, Captain Kirk would use the wire from the transformer, tie it off, and then make a commotion. The guard would trip coming into the room and be subdued, and Captain Kirk would use a blanket to subdue the second man and regain his freedom. Later, when Mr. Spock and Dr. McCoy beam down to Bella's office, they are immediately taken prisoner. He informs Spock and McCoy that he hoped that they would fall for his trick. Spock states the need to unite the planet, but it falls on deaf ears with Oxminx stating that he wants to be the one that unifies it. That is when a freed Captain Kirk comes in, armed with a machine gun, and frees Spock and McCoy. He then states that he intends to put the bag on Krakow and takes clothing from Bella's captured men. Both himself and Mr. Spock dress appropriately for the environment. Later, in a more amusing scene, Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock attempt to use a car. Mr. Spock informs Captain Kirk about the clutch and they are off. After several jerky moves, the car would eventually arrive at its destination. Mr. Spock would say, Captain, you are an excellent starship commander, but your skills as a taxi driver have much to be desired. 
Later, in order to create a distraction, Mr. Spock and Captain Kirk employ the help of a small boy. They promise him a piece of the action, and he agrees. He plays on the streets and runs up the stairs near Krakow's men. He falls, pretending to injure himself, and cries out for his father. Kirk and Spock come up and overpower the men. Then Kirk looks at the boy, points, and says, a piece of the action. Kirk and Spock would go into the building, and they would stun the guards, but they're then taken prisoner by Krakow's men. Captain Kirk informs Krakow that a heater can turn a man into a pretty big deal and asks if he can trust the men. Krakow thinks about it, and they go into his office and talk. Kirk takes back his phaser and communicator and informs Krakow that the Federation has taken over. Kirk says that they will take over the planet, put one guy in charge who pulls the strings, and the Federation will pull his strings. The captain contacts the ship and says to Mr. Scott that Krakow is all ready to be our pal, and he wants to show him the ship. Krakow is later beamed up to the Enterprise, and Mr. Scott tells him to behave himself or he will end up wearing concrete galoshes. Kirk and Spock would head over to Bella's office via the automobile. The captain promised Spock that he had the hang of it. Krakow's men would wake up and plan a hit on Bella's place. Upon getting back to Bella's office, the captain explains to him that the Federation is taken over. He makes Bella Oxminx call all of the other bosses and then has Mr. Scott transfer them to Bella's office. There was, this would bring all the bosses together. Once Krakow is beamed back down and all the bosses are together, Captain Kirk informs them that the Federation is taking over and taking a cut of 40% of everything. Later on, the groups from other bosses all converge to put the hit on Bella's office. Seemingly in control, Krakow lets Captain Kirk call the Enterprise one last time. Kirk instructs Mr. Scott to stun everyone in the vicinity of the location. After happening, once they all see the men drop, the captain informs them that they are only knocked out for a while, but are very well could have been killed if desired. That is when a deal is made to unify the planet. Bella states, okay, we get the point. Captain Kirk would appoint Bella Oxminx in charge with Krakow as his lieutenant. And if anyone else doesn't like it, they'll have to deal with the Federation. He informs them that the Federation is too busy to be directly involved, but will return every year to collect their cut. They will celebrate the newly formed syndicate. Later on aboard the Enterprise, Mr. Spock asks Captain Kirk how to explain to the Federation that a starship must be sent to Sigma Losha II each year to collect our cut. As when Dr. McCoy also states that he left his communicator in Bella's office. Mr. Spock points out that they will surely take it apart and discover its functions and states that the Transtator is the basis on all Federation technology. Captain Kirk would later say that the Iotian people may someday demand a piece of our action. <laughs>